up, sub flappers welcome to another video today we're going to be talking about ayato and his prospects in the game going forward some pairings good bad things that we need to be on the lookout for and of course just general discussion regarding the character and his kit now that we know essentially the very basic of what his elemental skill and burst skill does now do keep in mind we don't know how it scales we don't know things about internal cooldown now these are all important for this character because he is a hydro unit and a hydro unit with some sort of infusion in his elemental skill right so there's quite a bit i want to cover in this video make sure to like subscribe if you enjoy these kind of discussions and join us on youtube wednesday saturdays 7 to 9 p.m pacific standard time for live streams now let's get into the video first and foremost i want to talk about ayato is that being hydro i've already made a video talking about this he's going to be very powerful he's going to have potential to work in many different teams now how those teams likely will work out will really depend on a couple key factors here so let's start with vaporize the thing about vaporize is that everybody knows it's a good team but everybody also has the same concern in their head which is regards to internal cooldown issues now i'm gonna be honest with you i would be hard pressed after seeing his kit to think that he doesn't have some sort of internal cooldown issues because his elemental skill stance seems like it condenses a lot of power and puts it into single hits which registers also as normal attacks and also looking at his artifact set it just doesn't make much sense for him to have that much scaling through artifacts uh, and also have every single hit of his elemental skill being vapable which is going to be very easy to do if you just run someone like Xiangling with him uh, so it's a quite a stretch in my opinion to think that every single one of those hits are going to be vapable maybe every other hit would be ideal but even then i think that would still be too much depending on how his scaling works with his elemental skill now of course don't write this out but let's just be quite honest here hoyoverse hasn't really been very comfortable giving us proper vaporized uh traditional characters like they used to do back in liyue so nowadays especially if you look at yoimiya it's safe to think that they want you to move away from vaporize which you know we can bench the idea for now until he comes out but but the th good thing about Ayato is that he is not a pyro character so he's a hydro being able to use more than just vaporize very effectively in the game to essentially carry your teams now let's move on to another prospect which is going to be the freeze now i think to be honest this is going to be his bread and butter on top of this he has a slew of characters whom can provide very application even when off field right so that's going to be a great thing because ayato being on field can help a lot of those characters proc their blizzard strayer effect retroactively which can in turn help boost their damage consistency which overall benefits everybody now the one thing with freeze is that it doesn't have insane scaling and damage which actually makes sense because if you look at ayato's artifact it would point to filling in for that lack of scaling through reactions this also fits semi well canonically with pairing ayato with ayaka because of his burst skill being very good hydro application i don't know if it's going to tick incredibly often or, or it's just a visual effect but i would hope that the hydro application is going to be on par or better than someone like kokomi i see the range should definitely be larger now what about the consistency another good pairing with ayato depending on consistency is going to be ganyu for sure ayato layered with ganyu burst is going to create an entire freeze zone that is just too convenient for gameplay and i would like to think that ayato's burst skill is going to be on a longer cooldown as well as cd than ganyu's but of course don't quote me on that i just like to think that hoyoverse is probably going to make c0 ayato have a longer burst cooldown with higher energy cost and probably give that to us at the c2 <laughs> I, I don't know they just don't make characters like ganyu nowadays and it's hard pressed for me to think that they're gonna give us something that sweet to match perfectly with ganyu without us having to get any consolations right am i crazy to think that that there's no way hoyoverse is going to release ayato with his burst being at also 60 burst cost while being the same 
MCD as Ganyu. It just, it's just too convenient. I think Ayato's constellations are definitely going to revolve around uh, burst uptime as well as better scaling for his elemental infusion strikes, which I think at the end of the day is what people essentially will chase after. They want each strike to be able to hit for like 80, 100k and doing like, I don't know how many he can do. Seven or eight of them can total up to 700, 800k damage or maybe a million. Who knows? Like the Giga Wheels, nowadays a million damage is, is the benchmark. So I'm sure people will try to make it work one way or another. Oh, so finally, we of course have to talk about Electro Charge because I think Electro Charge is also looking really good here. Depending on how consistent Ayato's burst is going to be applying Hydro, Electro Charge could be a very good team here. With Ayato being on field and someone like Beidou, Fischl off field, or Ayato could be off field with someone like Kaching on field, right? I think there's a lot to be happy about if you are an Electro Charge player. I mean, any team comp player right now is going to be relatively happy with Ayato and it shows with his popularity. Of course, he's a hot dude. Who doesn't like a hot dude on their team especially with uh male characters being so rare in this game but at the same time he's just very efficient when it comes to utility features as well as him also being a dps so it's not the case as with kokomi where you're gonna have to really try your best to ooze out damage ayato comes with damage already packed in his kit this is how you're gonna draw out more of it while also utilizing his hydro status so electro charge likely is going to have a very easy time because hydro is just going to be spread everywhere once ayato presses his burst skill and then essentially it's just going to be blindfolded with electro charge all over the place while you hold your e stance and just slash 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 very very cool i think electro charge is going to be one of the more easier teams to pilot on ayato simply because characters like beidou can give shield and apply electro while officials e does exactly the same thing now while we're still on the topic of Ayato's elemental skill, I want to believe that his elemental skill stance somehow gives him stagger resistance, kind of like what Raiden's burst skill does for Raiden. So the reason I say that is because it feels like Ayato is kind of locked in place. And as you guys may know, with certain Spiral Abyss floors, those things hurt. All right. And I really don't want to rely on a shielder to keep Ayato alive. But at the same time, I do think someone like Zhongli can always be slapped into a team as a band-aid fix to any issue essentially but you guys at this point has to understand something and that is if you're running a freeze team the whole point is to keep the enemy stationary while you are essentially free from harm with Ayato essentially you can pair him in a team like this right you got Ayato you got Ayaka, you got Bennett, and then you have Ganyu. This team is essentially full-out damage, but that's also dependent on how much survivability Ayato himself has, because the character who's going to be taking the field most of the time is going to be Ayato, or in this case, Ayaka. So it's, I guess Ayaka and Ayato's roles can be switched in, in this particular team, as dependent on who is going to be more consistent with on-field damage. Now, of course, a lot of different variations could also involve Viridescence Shred with Sucrose, Venti, or Kazuha, as well as Zhongli, or characters like Diona to be flexed into the healer slash shielder role. Overall, we're gonna need a lot more detail to figure out exactly how to play Ayato and what's the best optimization, but these are definitely some things to look out for. Internal cooldown issues are definitely at the very top of most people's list. In fact, I think some people already know the answer to this depending on how much leaks you consume, but then again, they're just leaks. You don't know until the character gets released. A small tweak to his internal cooldown could change everything, right? So we honestly have no idea what we can do at this point, but to just from everything we can, sit here get ready for him and hope that he is good i think at the very least freeze and electro charge are going to be very good for him with the copium that vaporize could have a niche use in some cases all right with that being said this is going to be my ayato coverage thank you guys for watching and i hope to see you guys in my live streams until then urge you all to stay safe and peace peace